There are billions and billions of websites out there. Some of them were huge and didn't survive. They crashed and burned. So we're gonna go over the top 10 dead websites, whether they were either shut down or just are completely shells of their former selves and are just completely unused now. And these won't really be in any particular order. They're just kind of my subjective opinion for the top 10 best examples of websites that were awesome or very popular and now are just dead. But anyway, let's get started. Starting off, number one, we have GeoCities, which was an insanely popular web host. It was one of the first websites where you could upload your own web page and put whatever you wanted on it, like your own custom HTML, anything like that. Of course, they looked hideous because at the time, HTML and websites were not very advanced, but still, it was cool that you could have your own site. It was actually acquired in 1999 by Yahoo and survived all the way through 2009 when it was finally shut down completely. However, apparently in Japan, it kept going as GeoCities Japan, but it was announced that in 2019, it will have been shut down completely across the globe. So GeoCities basically is no more. Next up, we have dig.com, which used to be one of my favorite websites of all time though it's only now a shell of its former self. It went through a infamous Dig V4 redesign in 2010. Everybody hated it. They completely changed how the site worked and then everyone moved over to Reddit. If you know what Reddit is, you basically upvote things or downvote things. Very similar concept on Dig where if you liked an article that someone submitted, you dig it or if you didn't like it, you would bury it. And this was like a really popular website, but for some reason, I guess for advertising or whatever, it got bought out. Uh, Kevin Rose was one of the founders. They sold it and they decided to change it to the point where now you can't even vote on things anymore. It's just basically another blog website where they post news articles and stuff. No one votes on it. There's no user interaction or anything like that. Moving on, we have the famous MySpace. I think most people know what MySpace is. Most of you probably had one as well. Between 2006 and 2008, it was pretty much the king of social media sites. It was like the first one that pretty much everyone used before everyone eventually switched to Facebook. Now, they did try to redesign it and relaunch it as like the new MySpace a couple years ago, but I don't think it took off at all. It still is available, obviously, like you can use it if you want, but I don't think anybody does. And after 2008, and 2006, 2008 was its peak, and then ever since, it's been declining. And around 2008 is kind of when Facebook started taking off, and then it literally just took the traffic from MySpace. However, Facebook even is kind of starting to decline from its peak, but Facebook does own so many other companies that they bought up that I don't really think it's gonna be like MySpace where it dies completely. I don't think the company will altogether. All right, on to number four, I think we're up to. AOL.com, America Online, as it used to be called. You might be thinking, how is this site still around? Because originally AOL sold internet access in the form of dial-up, and apparently they still have like 2 million dial-up customers. So it seems like people do actually still use dial-up, or maybe they completely forgot that they are still subscribed to it, but there is demand supposedly. And it even had that whole thing with AOL Instant Messenger, which was crazy popular. I pretty much know everybody that I knew had AOL Instant Messenger, AIM at the time, and then that kind of got replaced by other chat services or just texting. Obviously, AOL used to be insanely popular. I don't know if you remember, like you would go to McDonald's and they would have these AOL discs that gave you like a certain number of minutes of online internet access. And then of course it was like a trial version. I don't even know if I ever had AOL. I think we had like Earthlink or some ridiculous company like that that I think is also still around. But AOL actually did get bought up in 2015 by Verizon for $4.4 billion. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, how the heck is it worth that much? There's no way. And the truth is that AOL mostly probably gets a lot of its value from the company that it owns. So it isn't just AOL, they actually have subsidiaries that you probably know. For example, Huffington Post, a uh, news site, like culture news site, TechCrunch, very popular news site, also owned by AOL, all that got bought up by Verizon. So 
and a bunch of other companies that you may not have heard of but are still pretty valuable. So yes, AOL is still around, but I would say the website itself compared to what it used to be as like a popular internet service provider is pretty much dead. And it's just made up, up of its subsidiary companies at this point. All right, up next we have stickam.com. Now this was a pretty popular streaming website for like chatting and vlogging or whatever, kind of like Twitch, except it wasn't for video games. It mostly was just for people who wanted to do a tw uh, chat where you have a webcam and then other people could kind of join in and have like a little chat box with video and then there was like a text chat and I used to go on there every once in a while. They gave me like a, a little time slot at some point where they would put me on the front page but shortly after that happened, they pretty much unexpectedly shut down in 2013. They just kind of put up a notice one day, hey, we're shut down when he went on the site. It's like, we're not running this anymore. I guess it just lost popularity, especially I think due to other websites like Twitch and like Justin.tv, which was like the same company as Twitch, but they kind of rolled it into Twitch. You may have remembered that. So yeah, stickham.com is another great example of a website that was really popular. It had lots of viewers and users, and then they just shut down and it died. All right, on to number six, askjeeves.com. This is an old school one. You might not remember this one, but basically askjeeves.com was like a search engine where they had this mascot, Jeeves, who was like a butler. And the idea was you would ask a question in the search query and it would be able to be typed in in like natural language. So you'd be like, what is blah, 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 blah. And you didn't have to just type in like a robotic search term, even though at this point that's pretty natural to most people. But at the time, searching the internet was pretty new. People didn't know how to do it. So the idea of typing in just a regular question was pretty appealing. And I guess the idea was you type it in and then the Jeeves Butler would fetch the answer for you, whatever. It's basically the same interface though as every other search engine. However, in 2006, they kind of scrapped the whole Jeeves thing and it actually just converted to ask.com, which is still around. Ask Jeeves has been long dead. Ask.com, obviously not really that popular anymore, but it's still around if you wanna use it. You might be wondering, wait a minute, how is even that website still around? I've never used it probably as a search engine. And as you might have guessed, it also got bought up by another company, which is kind of keeping it alive, I guess. And it was bought in 2005, before they actually changed the Jeeves thing, it was bought by IAC, a massive holdings company that actually owns a lot of different websites that you probably have heard of. For example, dictionary.com, College Humor, a bunch of others. It owns Match Group, which has all those dating websites like OkCupid, Match.com, Tinder. So this company is a massive conglomerate that owns a ton of companies and they probably figured, you know what? We may as well just keep it running. Why not? We have the money to do it. All right, next up, number seven. This is kind of like a two-parter. The first part is Google Plus, of course, because Google Plus was announced to be shut down. They're gonna announce, uh, shut it down in 2019. But have you ever heard of Google Orkut? Yes, Google actually did have a social media site and like Google Plus and Facebook and all these before Google Plus. And that also has been long dead. It was actually started by a Google employee who was named Orkut. Uh, not even gonna attempt that name, but you can just read it. And for the most part, even when it was around, it was mostly unheard of. It was pretty much just like a generic social media site. One notable thing is all profiles were public. It wasn't like you could only see your friend's profiles, although you could add friends and family and stay connected to them. But apparently the website got super popular in India and Brazil, and in 2008, Google announced that it would be totally taken over by Google Brazil. However, even that came to an end, and in 2014, it was shut down completely for good, and now Orkut is also 100% dead, and that was maybe around the time they started working on Google+, and that didn't work too well either. So maybe Google should just stick to not doing social media stuff. All right, this next one is gonna sting for a few people, and it is Club Penguin. Now, even I used to play this as a kid. It was actually a pretty fun, massively multiplayer online game for kids. And basically, you just had a penguin character, and you would play different games with your character. You could uh, create your own igloo, 
there was different like events and stuff they had it was like a big island it was super basic super dumb but for some reason it was pretty fun even though the whole game was just kind of going around and doing random mini games and chatting with other people and you could customize your penguin character and they had like memberships which you could pay for and have like bigger igloos and stuff like that but it was a really basic game but in 2017 it was shut down I guess it just wasn't popular enough, maybe not profitable enough. However, Club Penguin was replaced by a game called Club Penguin Island, which kind of like replaced it, and apparently that was owned by Disney, so I don't know if Disney just shut it down so they could replace the game and release the new one, but even Club Penguin Island was just announced to be shut down in the end of 2018. So Club Penguin very soon is going to be dead completely all versions of it. All right, coming near the end, we got a couple more. So next up is Zanga.com. This is actually still around, but I think most people have not ever heard of it before. And basically this was just a website, kind of like Blogger or WordPress, where you could upload your own blog posts and you could have like different templates and customize it a little bit, but pretty much it was just a thing where you could upload your own content. It wasn't like GeoCities where you could customize everything with HTML. It was more like MySpace, blogger combination or something like that but still it was very very popular at the time it probably peaked between 2005 and 2006 and has just kind of declined ever since and even though they kind of tried to relaunch it as like new zanga i think it's way past its time you look at the trends on google it's like no one has even heard of it anymore all right, finally, number 10, we have megaupload.com. A lot of you might have heard of this one. It was an insanely popular file sharing and file upload site that had like 50 million views a day at one point during its peak. But in 2012, it was actually shut down by the United States Department of Justice because they argued it was primarily being used and it was created specifically for hosting copyrighted content. So they shut it down and seized the domain name and have even been trying to extradite its owner, Kim.com. Yes, he changed his name, his last name to .com. They've been trying to get him to extradite to the United States for trial for years ever since. He lives in New Zealand, but he's still been going through appeals and he hasn't had to do that yet. But he's been going through a ton of legal trouble. I think at one point his home was like raided by police. So his website has caused him a ton of trouble, but I guess he's been fighting it. Kim.com did actually try to recreate the website, a new version called Mega.com. But after a while, I think he sold it off. And now he says not to use it because he has no control over the site and supposedly governments have control over it or something like that. So even that is not a good replacement. So pretty much all of his file sharing sites are just dead. So yeah, those are just 10 dead websites that I thought of, but if there's others that you think I should have included in the list, definitely let us know down in the comments and we can read what other people thought as well. So if you wanna keep watching, I've got other videos on here. I make new videos twice a week, so it should be worth it. So thanks again, guys, for watching. Be seeing you.